Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, we are doing the 10 to 80% charging time and charging speed test in the brand new Tesla Model S long range. So today we're gonna find out how long time it takes to go from 10 to 80% charge in this car. We did this test a few weeks ago in this exact same car at a non Tesla supercharger. So we failed to get that peak charging speed of 250 kilowatts and also the best time when it comes to 10 to 80% in a charging session. To be able to, well, achieve all of that, you have to go to a V3 supercharger or faster. If you're watching this in the future, they've only rolled out V4 superchargers in the Netherlands, not here in Norway yet. So what we're going to do, I'm going to turn around the camera. I'm going to show you how to preheat the battery, which is essential in this car to have it to optimal temperature to get that peak charging speed. To preheat the Tesla Model S, you can do it a few different ways. So first off, you can choose to navigate somewhere. So if I choose to navigate, for example, to, to Bergen, we are at 35% state of charge. So we don't have enough charge to go there. So the car will, you know, just set up automatic charging stops for us. Super simple. This is one of, you know, the best route planning, navigation systems, and also charger management there is out there. All EVs should be as easy as this. Look at this, just in a few seconds. And then, you know, uh, the, now you can see the battery is preconditioning for fast charging. So you just follow the navigation system. It will tell, you know, where to charge, how long to charge and all of that. Or if you just want to go to a supercharger to be able to, to charge, you can press this charging uh, button down there. It will also show you non-superchargers, but for the car to recognize the charger, charger as a charging station, it has to be in the, the, this list. I tried to you know, navigate to charging stations that didn't have the speed here, and then the car failed to preheat. So it has to show the speed like this. Um, so for example, we could choose this 1.4 kilometers away. And again, after, yeah, you can see we get the preconditioning for fast charging. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go about an hour out of Oslo to a place called Vespi to a V3 supercharger there and do the test there. Before I show you guys the charging curve, the chart, the results and everything, I just want to give a huge thanks to today's video sponsor, Saptic, with their Saptic Go home charger. The Saptic Go is a small, cool and stylish home charger that can charge up to 22 kilowatts and you can use it with every electric car on the market, even this Tesla Model S long range. You can also change the color of the cover after you purchase it. So say you paint your house, your garage, you just wanna mix it up, you can actually order a different color on the cover and change it on later on. And also, lastly, this charger was best in test in the Norwegian Automobile Association NUFS charger test in 2022. So yeah, it's a pretty awesome charger on all levels. So if you're looking to buy a charger and you want to support the channel, go to the link down below, find your country, click on the link and purchase it from there. Now look at this charging curve, guys. And yeah, this is very different to the test we did last time with this car at a non-Tesla supercharger when we weren't close to that peak charging speed of 250 kilowatts. Look at this. We actually peaked at 256 kilowatts at 11%. So yeah, no problems connecting to a V3 supercharger, getting that peak charging speed. And quickly, you know, before I just show you the rest of this charging curve, I just want to tell you the difference between a Tesla and a non-Tesla charging at a supercharger and a non-super charger. So Tesla do things a little bit differently than every other automaker. Yes, this car, the new X, the Y, and the three do use a CCS connector. So you can charge them at a CCS charger that uses the CCS standard. 
but the CZS standard is limited to 400 amps at 400 volts. Some chargers may be able to put at 500 amps, but the standard is pretty specific, 400 volts, 400 amps. And since this is on a 400 volt architecture, you're going to be limited in speed. Tesla superchargers are their own standard. Yes, they use the CCS connector, but they don't use the CCS standard. And that means they can output the amperage they want. And I'm guessing people have, you know, <laughs> done these calculations, but this car uh, connected to this charger with this pack voltage, we're pushing like 600 plus amps. That's why Tesla are able to achieve 256 kilowatts from a 400 volt architecture. But yeah, this is pretty awesome. Look at this charging speed. We have like 250 kilowatts up to like 30% and then it ta tapers off a little bit. We're still over 200 kilowatts up to 40% and then at 50% we're down to around 150 kilowatts and it just slowly tapers off. So at 80% we are at 70 kilowatts but we're going to get to the actual time soon. But the 10 to 80 percent, yeah, that is pretty awesome. But the 10 to 50 percent is maybe the most impressive. So with this car, you have to do a little bit of strategy because going to 80 percent isn't faster. Well, most EVs, it, it, it isn't. But some EVs, it, it, it doesn't, you know, you're not going to lose a lot more time going from 50 to 80 percent. In this EV, you most definitely are. So this test, a 10 to 80 percent may not actually represent the full picture of actually how fast you can travel with this car because if you go from 10 to 50, 10 to 50, 10 to 50, you're going to be able to have much shorter charging sessions and you know utilize more of that peak and fast charging speed. So let's take a look at the actual results. So 10 to 80%, 27 and a half minutes, which isn't the best time. I mean, my Audi e-tron GT I had before is much quicker. My current Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo is quicker. Even my Audi e-tron 55 I had a few years ago does 10 to 80 percent in 25 minutes. And also it has to be said that I read on the internet that this should be able to do 25 minutes but I connected to a V3 supercharger. All the stalls around me were va vacant so I was most definitely getting the peak charging speed but still 27 and a half minutes is pretty pretty good but you have to consider that this test we're not you know ranking the cars uh, on on the time because the time is only a little part of the story and also not the average speed because that's also a part of the story but how many kilometers of range you get per minute or per hour of charging in miles and also in kilometers because that's the real you know important thing if you charge for 10 minutes or 20 or 30 minutes not how many percent do you get how many kilometers of added range do you get because that is really what is important and when you look at that number you can see that this car sits up top of the chart with more than 1100 kilometers of added range from 10 to 80 percent so that's not even peak that's the average and you know this chart is almost 10 minutes more from 10 to 80 percent than the e-tron gt than the porsche taycan but because this has so much more range it actually charges a little bit faster than those cars but what's really impressive here is the 10 to 50 percent because 10 to 80 percent 27 and a half minutes 10 to 50 percent and I'm going to double check this because this may this may be an error. I'll put something on the screen if it, this isn't correct. But 11 minutes, 11 minutes to go from 10 to 50 percent. And 10 to 50 percent, you're still going to. I'm just going to do the quick math here. You're still going to get so 723 WLTP div uh, multiplied by times five. You're still going to get 365 kilometers, 361.5 kilometers of added range with 11 minutes of charging. And in that sense, this chart is basically, yes, it already charges faster than anything. But with that, I think this is pretty far ahead if you do a little bit of strategy. So in a race, this would be very, very interesting. So let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to do a race with this car. Possibly I'll be able to race it against a high-end Ionic 5, no, Ionic 6, the I new Ionic 6 in maybe a few weeks. So let me know in the comment section down below. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later. Goodbye.